All this mess on your screen on the satellite and radar could end up trying to become, in a way, a tropical or subtropical system by the end of this work week. What's going on, guys? Certified meteorologist Jonathan Keg is back with you. We're going to track this system. I do think regardless if this does develop or not, some stormy weather coming to the eastern Carolinas. Then I want to show you the latest model runs for that thing in the Caribbean or western Gulf. Just wait to see the latest on what the models are showing for that potential system. And then we're also going to touch on the Canadian wildfires and the air pollution, the smoke that is draining into the United States. That's going to be towards the end of the video. I'm going to have the chapters included so you can bounce around. I know your time is valuable, although I love for you to hang out and watch the whole thing. Post in the comments where you're tuning in from. If you are interested in the weather, any kind of way, staying informed or nerding out with us, hit that subscribe button. You come to the right place. Okay. First and foremost, the satellite with this potential tropical thingy that the Hurricane Center highlighted. It's the second one, by the way. Remember, they highlighted an area for possible tropical development in April. So this is the second highlight from the Hurricane Center. This brown dashed line going through the Bahamas and into South Florida, that is a surface trough. That is a dying cold front, dead cold front, really. Anybody in Florida that enjoyed, or really the entire southeast corner of the U.S. that enjoyed much cooler or much less humid conditions over the weekend. It was because of that front. Along this surface trough where air, uh, wind is kind of converging, coming together a little bit, that's going to be the focal point for that a system to develop right around here, around the Bahamas, and then lift up the Florida coast and then potentially develop as it gets towards the Carolina coast. This is a very, very, very common spot this time of the year to get tropical development. Front comes down. It dies. You have winds coming from both directions. Uh, eventually, if it's there long enough, one of the wind directions is going to win out. You're going to start to get some spin. And if it's over warmer water, you can fire some thunderstorms around that area of low pressure. As of 3 o'clock on June 3rd, Hurricane Center only giving this a 10% shot to develop over the next seven days, due in part, the water's really warm here, the Gulf Stream's there, but due in part because I think a lot of this it has stare of a water to develop, and I just don't know that this thing, thankfully, is going to stay offshore. So here is the future clouds and rain, and you see that little spiral there. That was kind of fast, but you do see that counterclockwise motion um, off of Cape Hatteras, closer to Virginia Beach, kind of riding up. It remains to be seen if it is going to meet the requirements to become a tropical system, which it has to do a few things. It has to have a warm core. It has to be completely closed at the surface, that counterclockwise circulation. And it has to be firing thunderstorms continuously around its center. That's what makes a non-tropical system different from a tropical system. Tropically, the thunderstorms are around the center. Non-tropical, they are not. Here, they're a little displaced, at least modeled. And right there over Virginia Beach, the center is on land. So in order for it to even try to do that, the center has to stay off land because of the off chance that it does uh, get back out into the sea. Hurricane Center has that highlighted. I wanted to show you some of the modeling. This is going to be the tropical depression formation area. And we're up into the 30, 40 percent range there. You see those High, those brighter colors again so we're not talking about 70 percent or greater or anything like that that means that 30 percent of the european ensembles are on board with some sort of tropical development as we move to the latter stages of this week and into the weekend let me show you the wind here again regardless this little thing here it's going to create some gusty showers this is on wednesday as it kind of works up the florida coast you see the darker oranges and reds again this is not a huge deal it's just if you have a beach day plan uh thursday into the weekend it's gonna be a little rough out there it's gonna be a little breezy and there's gonna be rain showers around 23 mile per hour gusts in myrtle beach again this is not a huge deal there's an opportunity for it to overachieve again if we stay, see the center stay offshore. Look at that, though. As we get into Friday morning, again, if you do have plans, Outer Banks, Ocracoke, into Virginia Beach, um, that's where it gets a little windy, 30 to 40 mile per hour gusts. And again, even if this doesn't develop, it's going to be a coastal low at the very least, gusty showers, uh, windy conditions on the coast, uh, really from Thursday. I'll take that back for the timeline. That's Thursday evening from Myrtle Beach and then getting into your weekend as it moves out at sea. There's also might be a shot here if it stays over the Gulf Stream. It's a little tight right there. That circulation um, up. Let me zoom in so you can clearly see it. 
right there. So it might have another opportunity as well. The water's much cooler up that way, of course, but if it can stay over the Gulf Stream, it might have another shot to try to become the first name storm of the season. Again, I mentioned earlier that this is in a very typical place for early season tropical development. You have those fronts coming down. Uh, sometimes they stall out over Florida and the east coast of the United States. Uh, they're shifting winds on each side of the front, and then eventually they start to spiral. They converge. We get thunderstorms around the center, and then there we go. There is our tropical development um, along the east coast. Now, the other spot that we typically watch this time of the year, it's the Central American Gyre, uh, Western Caribbean into the Gulf of Mexico. So that's the other spot, which brings me to the trash that we took out late last week with that system that had those dire, dire model runs. You ready to see the GFS right now? You ready for it? Drum roll, please. There it is. It's not there anymore. This is on June 14th, and it has all of, let me get my, uh, move the mic and let me get my handy dandy telestrator back out. This favored the Eastern Pacific. So there you go. All of those scary model runs posted everywhere. Trash. Uh, everything is on board with maybe getting a little bit of moisture into the Bay of Campeche. And then putting the system itself, the, that would be the third system on the Eastern Pacific side um, already. That's one of the things we talked about. Also, you have to watch out with the Central American gyre, even though a model may, may show it, depending upon what lobe of the gyre actually spits something out, it could be on the Eastern Pacific side. Now, I want to show you the GFS Fantasy run continuing. It's already started off with another thing trying to develop and and that's the crazy part about it and that's why look at this this is on june 16th we have a little area of low pressure there then we have a bigger area of low pressure right there they kind of fujiwara or pinwheel around each other and then we get one to kind of shoot out of the yucatan channel or western caribbean obviously we're not putting stock into this um in the Western Caribbean, GFS developing things, what? That's on June 18th. That's 15 days away. Um, so it's up to its antics again. The one thing that I will say, it's more in line with where we would expect tropical development due to the fact we now have the majority of that MJ pulse that we were forecasted to come through in that realm. So this would be a little more plausible. Again, you still can't take any kind of uh, specifics with it, location, the where, the when, the what, all that stuff. It's way too far out. Um, but uh, the European Ensemble is also trying to be on, on board a little bit with, with some things. Um, that's the first one, by the way. So it is still trying to show something in the Bay of Campeche lifting north. And then this would be the second one that the GFS shows. And by the way, there's the time frame. Uh, there's the moisture from the Euro. It has that system in the Eastern Pacific and then that moisture in the Bay of Campeche, just like the GFS now. So now we're on board. We have confidence that, I mean, we had confidence that the GFS was out to launch. Remember, I do like the GFS model. I do. I'm not picking on it. It's just in the Western Caribbean or Southern Gulf. Remember, if you see only one model run posted, it's the GFS 10 days in advance and it's in this part of the world it has an extreme bias to run up these storms these phantom storms way too aggressively way too fast way too strong and all of the above so that's uh one of the things that we're watching it's on board with the euro they have the same kind of solution for that 12 13th time frame and then there's that little moisture surge that the ensembles had uh i have way too much on the screen now right there that we're gonna have to watch towards the third week of June. So just want to clear that up, and I just wanted to show you that what we thought would happen last week with the GFS did exactly that. So if people are now still posting those crazy model runs, that's going to be because there's that secondary one now, and it keeps on getting later and later, also as we said on Friday, because that's in the GFS nature, to develop something too fast and too aggressive now the 18th for something down there in the Western Caribbean. It's a little more plausible because we have the brunt of that MJO pulse to help the environment out. Okay, real quick, want to get into some of the wildfire smoke. The brighter colors on here, the thicker the smoke in the atmosphere, and you see, and you're looking at the wrong screen, 
um, because I forgot to switch back over. I have multiple weather computers in our digital weather center here. So there they are, uh, the light brown through Wednesday into Thursday. That's You have some haze in your sky. And then once you start getting into the yellows and oranges, that's really where the air quality is going to start to suffer. I will loop that again. So from the Twin Cities into Eau Claire, uh, Rhinelander, Madison, Wisconsin, West Chicago, uh, Detroit, we've had some issues with air quality and some smoke in our air. Um, Southern Minnesota, back into Western Pennsylvania, most of the thick stuff is hanging out into Canada, north of the border, as the wind direction has shifted just a little bit. I want to show you where those fires are. This is all from the satellite, and what we can see here when we take our little dabber out um, anything that's in the red is the satellite picking up on where the footprint of the wildfires are today. So they are expansive. They're in a lot of places in the middle of nowhere. That is why it's so hard to fight these things because they are so deep into the forest and just burning a lot and then sending the smoke in our direction. There is uh, the satellite-derived hotspots, and this is pretty cool because we can actually see, okay, if the satellite thinks something is hot or extremely hot, of course, all fire is hot. Don't go touching it or anything like that. It's the satellite picking up on, okay, maybe a minor blaze or uh, something else. So we'll bring out the dabber again if it's going to play ball with me, and we can click on all that, and it's going to bring up if it's hot or extremely hot. There we there is extremely hot. So right there, uh, then we have the lighter orange is hot. So the point I'm trying to make is we have a lot of out of control wildfires in very rural areas of Canada. It's gonna take a while to get those under control because there's just it's very hard to get to. Alrighty, guys, I hope you found this informative and interesting. And I hope that the lesson that we shared on Friday and kind of brought this around just raises your awareness a little bit that anytime you see the GFS posted 10 days out in the Western Caribbean, not always, but more than likely, it's trash versus truth. Have a great afternoon, guys. We're going to be back here tomorrow to talk about big plume of Saharan dust. If you're in the Caribbean, you know about it. It's already there. It's going to head towards the U.S. on Thursday. We'll see you then. Have a great one, guys.